Good evening. I want to say just a few words of welcome to you this evening. Although we're virtual, you are in for a wonderful night of discovery. This is our 19th Cosmetics and Fragrance Marketing and Management Capstone. I've seen them all, and because they are all so good and so engrossing and so pertinent to our lives, they have become a highlight of FIT's academic year. But they aren't just a highlight for those of us at FIT. They attract industry itself because industry leaders know they can find research that is not just reliable, but far-reaching. And so these capstones, which brought in perhaps 40 or 50 people when they began, they grew in reputation and started to draw more and more of an audience. Now this year, of course, we're virtual, but in recent years, this event filled our largest auditorium, which seats 700 people. So you can see why this program makes me so proud. It does more than graduate the future leadership of the industry. It encourages the curiosity and innovative spirit that characterizes its students. And each year, these students investigate themes that are relevant to the industry, and they bring rigor and creativity to their scholarship. Now, this year's theme is the future of well-being. It was selected after a trip to the West Coast by the members of the class in which they detected growing consumer interest in this issue. And that was before the pandemic. Some of their findings, which you will learn about this evening, have been featured in Women's Wear and presented as well by the market research firm WSL Strategic Research at a major symposium whose audience included national retailers, financial firms, and corporations such as Disney and CVS. So I'll say no more so that there's ample time for you to enjoy our presentations. I want to acknowledge, however, and congratulate the program's founding chair, Stephen Candlian, who guides his classes with such diligence. And I want to thank CVS Health, which is our sponsor this year, for its great generosity and support. In fact, we are fortunate to have as our keynote speaker, Norm DeGrave, CVS Chief Marketing Officer. So this is an encore for Mr. DeGrave. He was our keynote speaker in 2018 when our theme was transparency. And last year, Mr. DeGrave was named one of Fast Company's most creative people for his campaigns for transparency in the beauty industry. So we are just delighted to be able to welcome him back. Hi, everyone. CVS is so proud to be the 2020 sponsor of the Capstone webinar. This is the second time CVS has participated in Capstone, having also given the keynote speech in 2018 when the focus was on transparency. Our continued involvement is a reflection of our respect and admiration for the quality of the program, the students, and the research. This truly is a think tank from which the entire industry can benefit. And this year's topic, the future of well being, couldn't be any more appropriate, as it feels like the whole world has hit a bit of a reset moment. Health has never been more important. In some ways, it feels like we've gone further down in Maslow's hierarchy, focusing more on health than safety than on self-actualization. But we've also felt our humanness and focused more on what really matters than many of the comforts that used to distract us, focusing more on our kids, our communities, our values, and our hobbies. This humanness will hopefully lead to a re-evaluation of how we measure success of the country as is advocated by one of the teams. At CVS, we're leaning into this new world of wellness in a number of ways. Let's take a look. We're embracing real life, continuing our focus on real images and beauty. Three years ago, we made a commitment to ensure that all the images in our store and in our marketing were either unaltered or identified as digitally altered. This month, we will achieve 100% compliance in our 10,000 stores, websites, emails, and marketing, so that women can feel good about themselves when they shop at CVS. A small contribution we've made to improving mental health. And we were the first to pull off a new spot about beauty in this new real life when we sent kits to our models and directed them over the internet. Take a look.
Just like that. That is beauty in real life. And in this new world of wellness, of course, people are becoming increasingly conscious of what they put in and on their bodies, which has led CVS to taking a number of moves. Treat yourself to breathing easy. Because CVS stopped selling cigarettes years ago. Treat yourself to skincare options that we made paraben free. Treat yourself to vitamins and supplements, all third-party tested to help ensure they contain what they claim. More ways we make it easy to treat yourself well. At CVS. <laughs> Clearly, the giant unmet need in healthcare is to make it easier. We hear that it's just too hard for people to get the care they need, too inconvenient, too expensive, too confusing which gave us an idea to create 1,500 local health hubs to make it easier, where you can get the services on your schedule at an affordable price, and the products are all right there as well. We hope that in this time, all companies will focus on improving society, either through direct improvements in health and wellness, or through broader empathy and actions as corporate citizens. I encourage you to listen to the ideas of these teams and really ask, what you can do differently to make the world and your community a better place. Congratulations to the class of 2020, not only on achieving your master's degrees, but on overcoming the challenges of graduate education while working full time during a global pandemic and still producing such high quality and thought provoking research. Hey everyone. On behalf of the graduating class of 2020, we are honored to present to you our capstone research on the future of global well-being. And on behalf of Team One, we are delighted to present to you the research on nations and well-being. $4.5 trillion. That is the value of the global wellness industry today which has grown nearly twice as fast as the global economy over the past five years. The number one attending class in Yale's history is not about the science behind physics or chemistry. It teaches the science of finding happiness in your daily life. Recently, the UAE has appointed the first ever Minister of Happiness, launching a national program for happiness and positivity. And in the 2020 FIT Global Wellbeing Census, over 70% of respondents reported that well-being is a necessity and not a luxury. It is evident that we all recognize the need to pause and prioritize well-being. However, if well-being is being recognized as such a priority, then why is the world still measuring success through the lens of production and economic output only? The limitations of GDP. Since World War II, GDP has been the key measure of a nation's success. It is a complex calculation to assess the size and growth of a nation's economy. It is given by the sum of total consumer spending, business investment, government spending, and net imports. But the measure has far outlasted the war itself and its prominence has led many governments to prioritize economic growth over the well-being of their citizens. Today, US and China rank number one and number two in GDP worldwide. However, the US also ranks number three in depressed citizens and China number one in carbon emissions. It has been over 50 years since Robert Kennedy stated, GDP measures everything in short, except that which makes life worthwhile. Fast forward to recent years, our measurement system failed to alert us about the upcoming 2008 financial crisis. As economic fragility was exposed, a new measure of national success was called for, with France leading the charge. French President Nicolas Sarkozy created in 2008 a commission charged to identify the limits of the GDP generally referred to as a Stiglitz-Send-Fatushi Commission. 
The findings of this commission have been echoed around the world. Well-being encapsulates both economic and non-economic aspects of people's lives, and well-being practices and policies must be sustained and passed on to future generations. Following these findings, in June 2011, the United Nations passed a resolution that asked governments to undertake steps that give more importance to happiness and well-being in determining how to achieve and measure social and economic development. With the same objective, many nations and organizations worldwide have created indexes, rankings, and reports in an attempt to measure well-being through multidimensional factors like physical health, social connectedness, and clean air. For example, the World Happiness Report tracks the quality of life satisfaction in over 156 countries, combining self-assessment with social and economic variables to answer why each country is or is not happy. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or the OECD, was founded to help governments to design better policies for better lives. In a one-on-one -on -one interview with OECD representatives, we explored the 11 topics across 35 countries that they have identified as essential to well-being and are part of their Better Life Index report. While well-intentioned, these various indexes fail to establish a consistent global consensus on how to measure well-being. They all have different viewpoints and objectives, resulting in a mass of data with no clear policy outcome. As economic Nobel laureate Stiglitz recognized, measuring well-being is important because what we measure impacts the policies we create. Without a global consensus, we are still in the same position we were in decades ago. GDP was created during a time of extreme global change. Now in 2020, we face new global challenges and have new opportunities for change. There has been an increase in conflict and tension due to the growing disparity between demographic groups, the rising levels of stress in our population, and the urgency of the climate change crisis. Then, a global health crisis took the world by storm and further highlighted inequality, institutional biases, and structural problems. The global pandemic stopped time, bringing citizens around the world together in an unprecedented way. Society felt the power of unity and collective voice as citizens we evaluated their core needs, setting the stage for faster and more effective government intervention. Government felt the need to create new policies that benefit their citizens directly. The time is now. The extreme change is an opportunity to establish a global consensus in the measurement of well-being. Which brings us to our solution, the new global well-being scorecard. Our objective, to create a globally recognized scorecard that will be the new metric of a nation's success. The scorecard is addressed to political leaders and policymakers who can impact change at national and local levels. It will be used to identify the strengths and opportunities of a nation through a holistic well-being score. The findings will determine strategic choices and policies necessary to improve well-being for all citizens. The findings will be used to evaluate the success of these policies to ensure their sustainability into the future. Introducing the FIT Global Citizen Wellbeing Scorecard. The GCW replaces GDP and provides a new way to measure national progress. The GCW is calculated by incorporating nine different factors that impact well-being, which roll up into four key pillars, health, safety, economic, and social. We chose these nine factors by combining the findings of the stiglitz sen Fatusi Commission with the complex demands of individuals today to create a more holistic and measurable view of well-being. Each factor was measured using an existing index that most accurately captures it to ensure best-in-class results. Then, we identified the nations that perform the best within each index, highlighting the specific government policies that have propelled them to the top. With these policies in mind, we will present a key recommendation for each pillar, which represents the policies that will most benefit every citizen. The first pillar in the GCW is health, 
which encompasses both physical and mental health. To measure physical health, we selected the Bloomberg Global Health Index, which ranks 169 countries in holistic health by looking at national resources and behavioral patterns. In this index, Spain ranks first, with a life expectancy of 86 years old, the highest among European nations. This is attributed to the nation's universal health care system and a tendency toward more active lifestyles among the population. Concerns around the ongoing mental health crisis have made it clear that proper mental health care is a core need for all humans. To measure mental health, we chose the World Happiness Report, which determines the happiest nations based on comprehensive survey results. This report ranked Finland first place in 2020. Their strong sense of community is coupled with a high level of trust in their well-run government, producing the happiest citizens. Which brings us to the first key recommendation inspired by the GCW. Governments must enact universal health care, including services that cover both physical and mental health. The gold standards of the health pillar, Spain and Finland, showcase how removing financial barriers to health care helps to maintain a high level of health and happiness in the population. Citizens cannot truly be well until they feel safe in their environments and in the way government policies impact their lives. Our second pillar, safety, is defined by environment and political voice. A nation's environmental score is drawn from the Environmental Performance Index, which provides data-driven findings on the state of sustainability around the world. We chose the EPI as it ranks countries' environmental health and ecosystem vitality, taking into account various categories across 181 countries. Switzerland's high ranking can be linked to its policies to preserve its postcard-worthy natural scenery, as well as incentives for both industries and consumers to make more sustainable choices. Governments must work to de decrease disparities across race, gender identity, sexual orientation, and disability through policies that work to uplift marginalized communities. Political score is taken from the World Governance Indicators Project. We chose this best-in-class benchmark as it summarizes the quality of governments in over 200 countries by looking at six dimensions, including voice and accountability, political stability and absence of violence, and government effectiveness. One of the top countries for this dimension is New Zealand, which has established a stable government that guarantees political rights and civil liberties to maintain peace. In 1993, they passed the Human Rights Act, which protects people against discrimination based on age, sexual orientation, gender identity, race, religion, and many other factors. The GCW's key recommendation for our second pillar, safety, is for governments to actively safeguard communities and their environments through a combination of protective policy and a strong welfare state model. Economic well-being is the third key factor of citizens' well-being. Our scorecard takes the measure of economic well-being far beyond a nation's macroeconomic GDP to include material living standards, education, and income equality. Living conditions measure the degree to which a reasonable quality of life is experienced by all, including material resources, shelter, and basic services. The Legatum Prosperity Index has been identified as best in class as it helps identify the path from poverty to prosperity globally. Denmark's strong social policies supported by citizens' tax dollars help solidify its top position on this index. Its generous social policies provide universal health care, tuition-free university, allowances to families with children, and care for the elderly. Education is one of the most fundamental drivers and outcomes of global development. We chose the Human Development Index as it measures the education factor based on expected years of schooling. Germany has secured the top rank with an average of 14 years of schooling. While high salaries for teachers result in higher expenditures from taxpayers, they also create a first-class education system and strong vocational programming that leaves students well prepared to enter the workforce. Income equality is an important measure for an entire society, whether rich or poor, as it supports economic growth and social cohesion. The Gini coefficient is utilized for being the best-in-class index to measure income equality. 
The Nordic and Central Eastern European countries are among the most equal due to their social safety nets and progressive taxation, with the government supporting medical and educational needs for all citizens. The GCW's third recommendation is for governments to ensure services and welfare by maintaining high levels of individual and corporate taxes. Those countries with the most progressive taxation have the lowest inequality and highest social cohesion. A healthy social life is essential for the well-being of global citizens. The social well-being pillar is defined by two factors, social connectedness and work-life balance. The OECD Better Life Index reports long working hours and time devoted to leisure and personal care. Better work-life balance helps to reduce chronic stress, preventing issues such as hypertension, heart problems, depression, anxiety, and burnout in the workplace. The OECD Index reports the top-ranking country as Netherlands. A healthy working culture in Netherlands is supported by the government policy and by industry expectation. The Dutch spend an average of 16 hours per day engaging in personal activities, and less than 1% of people reported long working hours. A nation's social connectedness score is derived from the OECD Better Life Index community measure. People with healthy social connections have a 50% greater likelihood of survival, while loneliness can cause depression and weakened immune system. Iceland's small size contributes to developing and maintaining strong relationship with the family and friends. 98% of people believe they know someone they could rely on, and their strong sense of community is linked to their high level of participation in society. Our four key recommendations for the social well-being pillar is to introduce policies that mandate limited working hours and comprehensive paid leave policies across industries. Implementing a four-day week work week can lower stress without impacting productivity and allowing individual citizens to spend more time on personal activities. Health, safety, economics, and social factors will be measured as a cohesive tool to ensure the well-being of citizens of all nations. And now let's move on to the application of our scorecard. We put our scorecard to the test by selecting three key countries to measure. The US, our domestic market, and the largest economic superpower is a highly individualistic and achievement-driven nation. Denmark, a country we analyzed during our FIT field study and a representative of celebrated Nordic exceptionalism is a nation where people prioritize collective quality of life over individual success. India, the emerging economic powerhouse we planned to visit earlier this year, but instead analyzed remotely through secondary research, is a socially hierarchical society that values family and social relationships. Our scoring methodology. First, we compiled each nation's ranking from its corresponding existing index. Then we normalized the data, assigning a new number based on each ranking. To determine the aggregate score of each nation, we compiled these new numbers across each of our chosen factors, forming each new nation's GCW score. This chart shows the application of the scorecard across the three nations selected. The red line shows Denmark that has sought high scores across the board. The US has opportunity for improvement in income equality and work-life balance. And India, we see, scores low in health, social, and environmental factors. When we compare the total well being score of each nation to their respective GDP, the contrast is eye opening. Although Denmark's GDP growth is the lowest of the three countries, it ranks the highest in our FIT GCW. These findings were further substantiated by our well-being census. When asked, does your government prioritize well-being? 
62% of Denmark citizens agreed. However, with only 22% agreement from US citizens, it is clear there is a global need for policies that allow citizens' well being to be prioritized. To recap what we've addressed until now, it is clear that GDP does not provide any nation a holistic view of success. Success has no value if the people who contribute to it are not healthy, happy, and safe. The events of the past few months have acted as a catalyst for change, accelerating the need for an increased focus on well being. And lastly, our research has uncovered the need for a global consensus in the definition and measurement of well being. And now I look to a better future. Our FIT Global Citizen Well Being Scorecard will serve as the new measure of national progress, a tool for governments that will bring social welfare and the needs of citizens to the forefront. There will be a new equation to measure the progress of a nation, well-being equal to health plus safety plus economic and social well-being. Well-being will be the new currency to measure policies. It will become the common language between organizations and governments. Under this new paradigm, citizens are asking more from their governments. Employees are asking more from their employers. And consumers are asking more from brands. Well-being is a business imperative. Now, let us see how our key recommendations from each of our pillars benefit industry. A strong welfare society model removes the burden of healthcare cost from employers with a new opportunity to build better benefits for employees. Protective policy and welfare programs lay the groundwork for everyone to have more equal opportunities to shine, leading to more innovation and entrepreneurship, ensuring the future of the industry. Progressive taxation will provide industry the opportunity to contribute to resources and education, leading to more diverse and well-rounded talent. And lastly, limited working hours and more paid leave will reduce sources of stress and anxiety, which can affect performance, creating more space to drive creativity. Those in power have a responsibility now more than ever to ensure they are safeguarding the well being of all individuals. The beauty industry already acts as a leader across many sectors through practices like sustainable packaging and better maternity leave policies. Therefore, let us lead the charge. The time is now. Now is the time to challenge previous norms and demand more. Now is the time to demand well-being for all. Through our revolutionary FIT Global Citizen Wellbeing Scorecard, we have the power to look beyond current policy, beyond GDP, and now we need to look beyond beauty. Team two from the class of 2020 is delighted to present to you our capstone research on the US well-being industry, Beyond Beauty, a driving force of the United States low ranking on the new FIT Global Citizen Wellbeing Scorecard is its healthcare system. Our doctors have been trained within a sick care system centered around treating symptoms rather than treating people. 80% of our healthcare costs, or $3.4 trillion, are spent each year on diseases that could be reversed through simple behavioral change. Added to our sick care system, we are facing a socioeconomic crisis as well. This income inequality extends into longevity inequality, with the top 5% seeing an acceleration in life expectancy, while the bottom 5% has seen hardly any growth in life expectancy at all. And with COVID-19, the longevity gap has widened at an alarming pace, with lower income communities at higher risk of contracting and falling at the hands of the deadly virus. For the US to rise in ranking in the GCW scorecard, 
we cannot depend solely on our broken healthcare system to do the heavy lifting. Instead, it will require coordinated efforts of several different industries, healthcare, wellness, and beauty. Today, each of these industries are structured as three distinct entities. Healthcare employs certified medical professionals and maintains a strict, regulated innovation process backed by clinical scientific breakthroughs. Wellness emerged as a response to the rigid healthcare system, addressing consumers' holistic needs centered around alternative treatments and preventative care. And the beauty industry has established an emotional connection to the end consumer while providing them moments of pampering and self-care. Today, each industry is facing a new reality and new consumer expectations. As the world has been put on pause, change is happening faster than ever. During a moment of reset, we have the opportunity to reassess the future of beauty and implement monumental change. The impetus for a fast fusion of industries. We predict that healthcare, wellness, and beauty will merge into one holistic industry, allowing for us to be much more responsive to growing consumer needs, just like an ever-evolving DNA strand. In preparation for this convergence, the entire structure of the beauty industry will need to transform beyond the way we define ourselves today. Beauty will need to establish a new scope that extends outside of its traditional and historical experience with implications that will ultimately enable us to progress beyond topical, beyond transaction, and beyond transparency into a new industry that's beyond beauty. First, we predict the rising need to evolve our products beyond topical as consumers look for more than just beauty from within. In our proprietary 2020 U.S. Wellness Study, 55% of women agree that their beauty routine plays a role in their overall health and wellness. But the idea of health and wellness has taken on an entirely new meaning. Our consumers have been forced to think about the products they purchase in new ways over the last year. No longer will they identify products under heritage nomenclature like hair care, cosmetics, skin care, and fragrance. Instead, we anticipate that consumers will consider two main categories while shopping, essential and non-essential beauty. This will not only change how brands communicate and market products, but also how they are merchandised and sold in retail. Essential beauty will deliver health and well-being to the end consumer through claims backed by science. This will include any products that serve the purpose of hygiene, protection, care, and repair, like skincare and hair care. Meanwhile, non-essential beauty, while still important, will evolve to communicate emotion, lifestyle, and image. This includes any products that transform or alter the outward appearance, like color cosmetics or nail polish. But a simple reclassification of our categories is not enough. Consumers are looking outside the sick care system to bolster their mental health, relieve their sleep patterns, and strengthen their immune systems. They want to build harmony between their internal and external lives. With Mintel reporting that one in two consumers have taken a vitamin or supplement for skin health in the past year. The future of our industry will lie in the adoption of what we're calling beauty spiritualization. The ability to center our brands and products around addressing the holistic needs of consumers' minds, bodies, and souls. Nearly 50% of respondents in our exclusive 2020 US wellness study stated that they would consider trying microdosing illustrating the growing destigmatization and increased willingness of consumers to experiment with newer, formerly fringe pursuits of wellness. And new brands are popping up to serve these consumer curiosities. Inscape delivers an omni-channel approach to meditation. While clients can experience a moment of tranquility in their meditation studio, they can also bring this experience home with holistic products sold in the beauty boutiques and an app with guided meditation playlists. The brand Samurais offers personalized holistic sleep solutions, including plant-based formulas, as well as tools for sleep tracking and meditation to improve sleep over time. And sexual wellness brand Satisfier, who sported the longest line at February's CW product demo, 
is leading the sex positive revolution with sophisticated products designed to normalize female pleasure as an integral part of self care. In the short term, we predict that the consumer's new mindset on the heels of the COVID pandemic will shift that industry's heritage categories into two classifications of essential and non-essential beauty. But in the long term, we envisage the concept of beauty spiritualization transforming the industry in a way that empowers brands to take on a new meaning in consumers' lives, speaking to all aspects of their holistic person. This transformation beyond a category mentality will help push our industry beyond topical to a future that thrives on delivering integrated solutions. Spurred by a completely new retail climate, we must push beyond transaction. To build a future-proof distribution strategy, beauty brands will need to show up where their consumers are shopping and move towards a future of greater accessibility across the industry. In this new reality, we are seeing beauty's house of worship, the department stores, come crumbling down. Our entire religion is about to change. Luxury retailers have failed to evolve in our growing virtual environment, unable to meet consumers' growing needs for convenience. With the acceleration of e-commerce achieving 10 years of growth in four months, retailers who adapt quickly will win. But retail as we know it no longer will consist only of e-commerce or brick and mortar. With tech giants like Facebook and Snapchat moving into the retail marketplace, we predict that all beauty brands, especially those considered luxury, will need to rethink their distribution strategies and start to channel pivot. This will be the catalyst for what we foresee to be beauty unification. As luxury brands step outside of luxury channels and start to integrate into the digital ecosystem, the gap between luxury and mass will narrow, making retail more accessible, convenient, and competitive. As beauty merges with health and wellness, we expect that beauty brands will be forced to elevate their propositions as well. With performance-based benefits and clinical claims at the core, new experts will enter into beauty conversations. In 2020, we've seen new heroes of public communication emerge. With their growing social media influence, public servants like Dr. Fauci and Governor Cuomo have given customers a heightened level of access to unbiased expertise rooted in science and facts to guide their decisions. These new consumer expectations demand that we look to evolve our frontline workers beyond the traditional definition of a beauty advisor, the professional health concierge a new class of beauty, health, and wellness experts born out of a combination of the sharp rise in medical professionals who plan to switch careers in the next year and upskilled beauty advisors who want to serve shoppers more holistically. These respected professionals will undergo a full certification curriculum to serve as virtual guides recommending preventative practices and product solutions across brands and platforms to help consumers achieve their holistic health and wellness goals. For instance, when a consumer has a question about how to treat their eczema, the PHC can help by writing a quick prescription, give advice on what foods to avoid, and what products to use for sensitive skin. Refocused distribution strategies and the professional health concierge will give way to a brand and retail landscape that democratizes health, beauty, and wellness offerings for all consumers bringing increased credibility and affinity to the industry. Moving us beyond transaction to intimacy at scale. Finally, within our companies, we need to progress beyond transparency. For the first time in 2020, according to Edelman's Trust Barometer study, business has tied with NGOs as the most trusted institution globally. But within that, consumer packaged goods is the second least trusted business sector, just above the financial services industry. But beauty companies cannot expect to grow admiration and trust with their consumers if they're not building both with their employees first. We believe beauty companies will need to appoint a new C-suite role, the Chief Health Officer to facilitate increased transparency with 
internal and external stakeholders. By keeping a pulse on consumer health and serving as a corporate ambassador to worldwide health organizations. The CHO would also be responsible for rolling out increased employee wellness benefits, starting to align their internal practices with their external ambitions. And in doing so, companies can expect their overall medical expenses to drop $3.27 for every $1 spent on wellness. This heightened investment in consumer and employee health is reminiscent of a corporate model from the 60s and 70s, when beauty and pharma were under the same umbrella. But while most companies dissolved their beauty brands, there was one company that maintained this strategy through today. With a 94% CEO rating on Glassdoor.com and a future fit business model, Johnson & Johnson will become the unlikely rival for our beauty companies in the future. From its founding in 1886, Johnson & Johnson has a rich history of pushing the medical industry forward through cutting edge products and specialized service. Their strategy centers around forging a new level of transparency with consumers through their expertise in healthcare and science, leading to an impressive portfolio of trusted brands across categories like Neutrogena, Aveeno, Tylenol, and Band-Aid. At the end of 2018, CVS paid 69 billion to acquire Aetna, establishing CVS Health to bring heightened transparency to the consumer health experience through local, easier to use, and more affordable care. Since 2011, Nestle has worked to establish itself within the health nutrition industry through the creation of Nestle Health Science. Since then, they've acquired several health nutrition companies, but have most recently started to enter into the wellness supplements category through their acquisition of Vital Proteins in June. We predict the next wave of the J&J model will be inspired by emerging startup brands who are accelerating the fusion of industries with propositions that blur the lines between beauty, health, and wellness. For instance, the brand Hims offers a portfolio of products ranging from shampoo to collagen supplements to prescription for erectile dysfunction. They've launched primary care services for common ailments, online mental health therapy, and most recently at-home COVID tests. This breakthrough brand model finally addresses a long sought out need for enhanced transparency within healthcare. Nowhere can this be seen more than in the rapid adoption of telehealth services during the COVID pandemic. As the ultimate tools of transparency in medicine, digital health services enable nearly instant access to professionals that provide personally tailored advice. Ostner Health in Louisiana, one of the coronavirus hotbeds, conducted more than 120,000 virtual consultations as of June this year, compared to just 3,300 in all of 2019. We foresee that telehealth will play an increasing role in the way beauty brands interact with their consumers to provide increased access to customized solutions. The roadmap for beauty companies to move beyond transparency should start from within through a newly created C-suite role that prioritizes health and wellness for both employees and consumers. From there, companies will need to focus on the ways that they can bring scientific credentials to the heart of their missions, whether through M&A activity, portfolio expansion, or investment in digital health technologies. Striving for both these short-term and long-term goals will finally allow the beauty industry to democratize the pursuit of a long, healthy, and high quality of life for all transforming us from beyond transparency to genuine consumer trust. As the beauty industry evolves beyond, one crucial constant remains, our consumer. Today, as the world spirals, our consumer's life is in constant disruption, individually, culturally, and collectively. The current unrest and environment is forcing the consumer to further define personal identity causing brand affinity to transform as expectations grow. Limitation has disappeared and brands are being forced to define a clear and meaningful purpose as they connect to an entirely new consumer. But the current consumer-centric relationship is truly a one-way street. The next step in industry transformation is to fundamentally shift beyond the marketing funnel and develop an omni model that focuses on emotional needs and human connections.
Meet our infinite consumer. By virtue, our newly defined industry will now be able to serve the infinite needs of this future consumer. Brands must go beyond traditional boundaries and connect with consumers in all aspects of life, providing fundamental human needs that go beyond today's linear consumer brand relationship. We believe the needs of the infinite consumer will fundamentally shift business strategy. The evolving and thriving wellness industry will be the catalyst for merging health and beauty. Our consumer is at the heart of this new structure. To properly serve the infinite consumer, our industry will need to lean into emotional needs and move forward with passion and purpose. Through the convergence of healthcare, wellness, and beauty, we will create a new overarching well care industry to meet the needs of our evolved infinite consumer. To prepare for this imminent merger, it's imperative that beauty evolves its categories beyond tropical, its communities beyond transaction, and its companies beyond transparency. Our research has driven us to predict that categories will transform by dismantling heritage nomenclature and establishing two distinct categorizations, essential and non-essential. And beauty spiritualization will enable brands to think beyond simply beauty from within, to embrace consumers holistically through their minds, bodies, and souls, ultimately moving beauty beyond topical to integrated solutions. With a pivot towards a future-proof distribution strategy, luxury brands will seek more accessible retail channels, leading to a beauty unification of luxury and mass. In this increasingly competitive environment, consumers will seek out the professional health concierge for unbiased expertise across their holistic lifestyle, ultimately driving beauty beyond transaction to intimacy at scale. Our final prediction is the evolution of companies. The appointment of a chief health officer will realign priorities to a more health forward approach. Bringing science to the heart of their missions, we will see acceleration in product portfolio expansion, the adaptation of digital health technology, and M&A activity with the pharmaceutical industry, ultimately pushing beauty beyond transparency to genuine consumer trust. As a metamorphosis beyond beauty, the new well care industry will be defined by our new categories rooted in integrated solutions, our new community providing intimacy at scale, and our new companies delivering genuine consumer trust. Committed to a higher order purpose, the newly integrated industry will strive for a future where all consumers can pursue a long, healthy, and ultimately beautiful life. Well care will empower all consumers to be well. And this transformative industry will require a transformative purpose, letting go of our past instincts and evolving beyond vanity to humanity. Thank you. We are pleased to present the annual graduation awards for the CFMM class of 2020, recognizing students, faculty, and alumni for their contributions and achievements. We begin with our annual scholarship recognition, honoring members of the class of 2020 with consistent high academic achievement and intellectual contributions in the classroom. Recognized this year are Leanne Hug, team lead for CoverGirl US brand trade marketing at Cody Inc. And Allison Pollock, director of global product marketing for Bobby Brown at the Estee Lauder Companies. Congratulations, Leanne and Allison. In the same category of scholarly excellence, the program's annual Outstanding Scholar Award is presented to the students selected by the faculty for top scholarly and intellectual contributions throughout the two-year curriculum. Congratulations to Katerina Berzio, Regional Brand Manager Innovation at Beiersdorf, this year's Outstanding Scholar. Each year, Cody sponsors a Professional Achievement Award to recognize a graduate selected by the Alumni Association. This year's awardee mentored and sponsored last year's Capstone Research Event, successfully launched several industry innovations this past year, 
and serves as a member of the program's Industry Advisory Board. Congratulations to Andrew Videra, Global Vice President of Marketing and Product Innovation at Luminous Cosmetics. Another key pillar for the program is our talented adjunct faculty. Each year, the graduating class votes to present an adjunct professor with the Estee Lauder Company's Faculty Leadership Award. Nominations describe this year's recipient as passionate, dedicated, impactful, thoughtful, and a relatable leader in the classroom on an intricate subject. Congratulations to Amanda Bopp, Vice President of Digital Marketing and CRM for Kate Spade, New York. The L'Oreal Student Leadership Award is selected by the graduating class. This year's recipient was described by peers as a true born leader, always poised, always articulate, and a strong team motivator. Congratulations to Cody's Leanne Hug. Our final award is an official college designation as department medal recipient for the program's graduating class. This year's winner, selected by the faculty, is Katerina Berzio of Beiersdorf. As a final note, we are thrilled to recognize fellow CFMM faculty member, Dr. Denise Sutton, who is the recipient of a Fulbright Fellowship to lecture on innovation in education at the University College in Vienna this January. Dr. Carlson and I hope you were inspired this evening by the work of the Beauty Industries Think Tank, and thanks go to CVS for their sponsorship of this industry webinar. We thank our corporate partners for their continued support and know that they join the faculty in congratulating the talented class of 2020 and all of tonight's honorees. Thank you.